So today, I want to talk to you guys about a very important subject. Over the last couple of months, I've been teaching my viewers how to be wealthy, how to invest, how to uh, make money in uh, several uh, ventures on the internet and online. You know, I've had my step-by-step -step guides and I've gone into details on several things, YouTube, Quora, affiliate marketing, uh, and I think a few days ago I did um, cryptocurrency, you know, I've also done drop shipping. you know, you name it, I've done it. But it serves no purpose, for instance, like if I tell my followers and my viewers, I say to you, okay, like this is how you can make money and then I'm not helping you guys plug the loopholes on why your money is going away. So today, I'm not just going to teach about how to make money, today I'm going to teach about why you're not making money, why you are probably, I don't want to use the word poor, but why you're not as wealthy as you should be. So we're going to talk about 20 habits, 20 habits that keep people poor, 20 habits that keep people poor. Now. These are from my personal experiences and I'm 47 years old, I've lived a very um, eventful and uh, interesting life and so maybe I should know. And so the first one is regularly eating out regularly eating out you see a lot of people you know like um, like to eat out you know like they think that you know like it's a, a hip thing to do it's a cool thing to do and then you know, like they think that you know um, how do I put it now they say like okay this is um, something that everybody else does but it costs a lot of money to eat out you know and then it compounds over time it does compound you know so it's always better for you to make your own food at home you know, cook your own food at home, you know, you could eat out once in a while, you know, or you could order, um, um, you know, like on Deliveroo, if you have Deliveroo in your country, or if you have like maybe DoorDash, or you have like, um, um, you know, there's several other delivery services, or pizza, you know, you could do that once in a while. But you see, it's always better for you to cook your food. And it's not just uh, that it's less expensive, but it's also healthier for you. You know what goes into your food. Uh, you know, like people who have restaurants, who have delivery services, they're not doing this because they love to have restaurants or delivery services. They're doing this because they want to make money. So whatever ways they can cut corners, you know, like maybe the oil, the vegetables, you know, like they're going to do that. And then they're going to charge you a lot. So it's not just about money. It's also about your bodies, you know. And then another thing that people do, which makes them poor, another bad habit is buying designer clothes. Now, I wear some designer clothes. You know, I wear designer clothes. I like to, because I, I have this principle and it's my policy. I believe that the most expensive thing is usually the cheapest or the least expensive in the long run. So I do buy quality clothes, quality clothes. You know, so I don't buy them often. I buy them, you know, like uh, um, every so often, like maybe once in a year or twice a year, you know, and then at all the th times, it's not like I buy, you know, like designers approach me and say, okay, um, Reno, can you wear our clothes for free? Just wear our clothes, take pictures with it. You know, so that's, you know, and I can afford it. However, what a lot of people do, especially young people, is like, you know, like they want to wear designer clothes and then they want to take pictures on Instagram. They want to show up. They want to live a fake lifestyle. And it's very, very expensive. You know, so money that you should have gone into investing, you know, goes into uh, trying to look rich, you know, with designers that you can't afford. You know, and so it's one habit that I really encourage people like, you know, cut off, you know, if you're going to buy designers, do what I do, just buy sparingly, sparingly, you know, but the best thing is just, just buy clothes that you can afford. And that's just the best thing, buy clothes that you can afford. Now, another thing, and I've talked about this at length, is always upgrading to the latest iPhone, always upgrading to the latest iPhone. Year over here, there's very, very little difference between the last iPhone and the new one. And so basically, if you have the, the one that was previously released, you don't need the new one. You know, it's just a marketing gimmick by Apple. And you know, that's their job, you know, like their job. Obviously, they want to make money. So that is their job. But you have to apply your common sense. You have to apply some um, discretion, you know. So you think about it, there's so many things that you could do with the money you're going to be spending on an iPhone 13. You, you know, you can buy a plot of land in a low-income area. You can buy uh, 40 bags of rice if you live in a third world country and then sell them in the uh, urban areas, double your money. You can buy Bitcoin. You can trade. You can trade Forex. There's lots of things that you can do. But when when you say, okay, I'm going to buy clothes, I want to uh, buy an iPhone 13, something that you don't need because everything that the iPhone 13 can do, your old phone can do it, 
So, but it's just a status symbol. So it's one of the things that keep people poor. That keeps people poor. Don't think that you want to impress people. Really, people are, they are not really looking at you. People are self-absorbed. So if you want to impress them, it's, it, you're wasting your time. Now, another thing is this, is that people want to go a short distance. In like any distance, and when I say a short distance, well, like what I'm talking about is any distance that is less than five miles. You know, you want to go on those distance and then you just take, you drive, you take an Uber or you take an, a taxi. And I'm saying, my wife and I, you know, we travel all around the world. You know, I mean, you guys know that. I travel all around the world. Money is not my problem, but yet I walk any distance that is less than five kilometers. I walk it. I walk any distance. As a matter of fact, and this is a true story, you know, my wife is here. She can hear me. Um, when my wife was going to have my last child, we actually walked to the hospital because I live in a rural area. And some of you know that, you know, I've always talked about this. I, I don't like the city, so I live in a rural area. We walked to the hospital. I know it sounds incredulous, but she wasn't in any pain. You know, the doctor said we should just come. So we walked to the hospital. We weren't even expecting to have the child that day. But then the doctor said, look, this is the due date. You know, you got to stay here until you have the child. So my wife stayed. The next day we had the child. But we walked in the winter. In the winter. You know, as a matter of fact, if you see the video that I put on YouTube and Instagram, the river in front of our house was frozen. I'm sure some of you remember that video. That video was taken on the day my wife and I were walking to the hospital. So you see, Try to cut down on things like that. You don't need it. And then another thing is buying lottery tickets. You have less than 0.001% chance of winning the lottery. So why would you do that? You, I mean, it's, yes, I know they keep on dangling people that have won $65 million, dangling people that have won a uh, so, so, so amount of money. If you watch, there's a show that is on TV, How Will Lottery Ruin My Life? Most, I'm not saying some of those people, I'm not saying some, I'm saying most of those people, the lottery ruin their lives because they're not prepared for the money. The money comes and then they just, you know, it, it tells with some of them. I think about two weeks ago, one of them committed suicide. But forget about that. Buying a lottery ticket is just because you, your chances of winning are so slim. Do something better with that money. So if you're buying a lottery ticket or sports betting, you're spending an average of maybe $5 every month. You can use that money better still to do something else. You can purchase life insurance. You can, you know, invest in shares. There are a lot of things that you can do. And then there's a, um, a habit that I know is going to make some of you angry because I'm mentioning this, but smoking. Smoking. Before I did this video, I went to try because I don't smoke, but I just went to a shop. I said, okay, I said, how much is this? And I said, this particular one, how much is this? But you know, like the cheapest packet of cigarettes I could get was $5.45. And then you think about that. And then people smoke packs of that in a day, not, not in a week, in a day. So just imagine how your money is going. So try to cut that habit, not just for your health, but also for your financial health. Also for your financial health. Now, another thing is alcoholism. Excuse me. Now, here's the thing. When I mention alcoholism, a lot of people are thinking, okay, he's talking about alcohol. No, moderate drinking, moderate consume, consumption of alcohol is actually good for you, especially when it's wine, red wine, not liqueur. But even liqueur itself, scripture is not against it. You know, in scripture, we are told that we can use our money for tithes. That's the Jews, because uh, um, in the New Testament, we're not meant to pay tithes. But it says that, that uh, the Jews can use their money for tithes to actually buy liqueur. But the thing there is, is, is that you don't have to. But what I'm talking about now is not drinking alcohol. I'm talking about alcoholism that is getting drunk scripture is not against drinking scripture is against getting drunk so alcoholism it's it, it consumes a lot of money and then also it ruins your reputation it ruins your ability to work so not only is it consuming money now what it's also doing is that it is also consuming your time productive time you see now another thing that you could do also you know that a lot of people do is that they buy on impulse so you go to a store you know i have a friend who owns like um a fuel station what do they call it in other countries petrol station gas station yeah so he owns this uh, and then what he does is he positions you know stuff here he put them here put them there put them there you know little little, little knickknacks like maybe nail cutter you know or maybe like a uh, um some kind of candy or some kind of like a uh, a sun visor or, or glasses things that you don't need and then you walk into uh the counter to go and pay and then you just begin to see those things and then they're calling your name and you just buy them those are impulse buys you don't 
don't need them. Anything that you buy on impulse is not a need. It's, a, it's not even a want. It's just boom, indiscipline. So don't buy. When you go to a store, have an idea of the things that you want to buy in that store. And when you get to the store, buy only those things. Don't buy anything beyond what you have intended beforehand to buy at that store. Anything else, that's an impulse buy. And impulse buys make people poor. I can't restate that. Impulse buys make people poor. Now, another thing there is this is like people say, okay, oh, this thing is on sale. Oh my gosh, it used to be $100 and now it's $50, so I'm going to buy it. You know, funny enough, those things are actually marketing gimmicks. And I know because I'm a marketer, in fact, in almost 100% of the cases, they are lies. What they are telling you is that this thing was $100. What they are actually quoting is the manufacturer's standard retail price. So they are quoting the manufacturer's standard retail price and deceiving you to think that, okay, you're getting a deal. You're not getting a deal. That price that they're putting there for you and say, okay, this thing, it was what so-so and so, and now it's now what is now selling for this. No. What they're, they're not putting the price that they once put it up. So they are putting the manufacturer's standard retail price. And it doesn't matter. You are not saving money by buying things on sale. You're actually spending money. So it's been penny wise and pound foolish. So don't buy things on sale. If you need things, buy quality things. Don't buy things that nobody wants to buy, nobody likes, people have rejected that. It's gonna show on your body when you buy uh, clothes on sale and then you walk, they are ill-fitting, the colors are kind of awkward. People are gonna know, oh, I look at this guy, I know that he bought that stuff on sale. And you don't want that. It makes people look at you as a cheap fellow. Don't do that. You know, so buy what you can afford, don't buy things on sale. I, can, I, mean, I, 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 I cannot restate that enough. You know, you're not getting anything, you know. Buy what you can afford, don't buy things on sale. Now, another thing there is, is like people do this, they, they, they buy coffees, they buy tea, they go to Starbucks, you know. Or if they don't go to Starbucks, they go to Pete's Coffee, or they go to McDonald's, or they go, if you're living in a third world country where you don't have any of these places, they go to like a Meishai. If you go, if you live in India, or if you've been to India, um, Turkey, um, because I've been traveling a lot in all those countries they have what they call um chaiwala chaiwala so if you if you go into a chaiwala it's you're wasting your money you're dissipating your money you're dissipating your money what you want to do is like go to your kitchen get um a bottle uh, sorry a, a, a cat going make your tea make your coffee brew your coffee or and if you want to take it out with you then get a plastic cup and then buy them buy them in bulk get a lead pop them in and then you're going to be saving. You just think about that. How much is a, cu a, cu a cup of coffee at Starbucks? You're talking about $5.50. Imagine if you're saving that every day. That's about almost $200 in a month. You think about that. So it compounds. It compounds. Now, another thing that people do, you know, and it is, this is something that I've talked about before, is that in they buy bottled water. And then they say to themselves that, okay, well, you know, they are drinking something that is healthy and then it is worth it. Now listen to this. I drink bottled water, but I don't drink filtered water. I drink spring water. I drink Perrier and I can afford it. But the vast majority of people, because Perrier is very expensive, the vast majority of people don't drink uh, um, uh, spring water. They drink just bottled water and most bottled water is filtered water. So what it is that they just take tap water, just take tap water and then they filter it and then they're selling it to you. So why not just buy a water filter yourself and then just get like a, a metal bottle and then always fill it and take it out with you? That's, what it, that's basically what it is. If you're going to buy bottled water, uh, make sure that you're buying spring water. What is spring water? Like Perrier comes from a spring. A spring is it's not filtered. It's like, you know, it has mineral properties. So you're drinking it like you're drinking vitamins. But if you're not buying that, you're buying bottled water and you think that you're drinking something healthy, no. Go and buy a water filter and then it filters the water. You put it in like, um, you know, like a cup that, it is, it, that you have, not a disposable one, one that you can always use long term. You're saving yourself money, a lot of money. Because it's always cheaper for you to filter your water. And then if you look at it, most times the, 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 um, the, the filtration process of the water that you filter at home is much better than what you buy because they are doing mass, it's just mass uh, uh, production, you know. And so another thing there is this is that, you know, like, and I don't know how to put this now, uh, you know, this kind of like, it's, ooh, how I'm going to say it, like pornographic sites, porn sites, you know. Hmm. Okay, yes, porn sites. So, People go on sites like Pornhub. They go on sites like Pornhub. Now, I've, I don't go on porn sites 
Now, I do not, you know, I'm, I mean, not, all those things don't interest me at all. However, I saw the data and Nigeria, Ghana, Jamaica are countries that spend a lot of time and a lot of money on Pornhub. Now, you can Google it yourself. You can research it. And then, you see, that's a lot of money that is going down the drain. And it's also causing frustration and it's leading to things like, you know, rape in society It's leading to things like, uh, uh, like it's not just rape, you know, like um, uh, all kind of sexual crimes. And, you know, like these are unwholesome practices that is being caused by visiting, you know, pornographic websites. It messes with your mind. You, you don't want to do that. And then also the premiums that you're paying. And then also another thing that you know like people do which costs a lot of money is that they borrow from banks to spend on consumption if you're going to borrow money from from a bank you ha it has to be money that you're going to spend on production maybe you have a business that is already profitable and you want to make it more profitable or maybe you want to go to school or maybe you want to buy shares that you know that maybe they are going to go up you're definitely sure or maybe you want to import stuff and then you cannot um, afford to pay the for the imports and then you're going to a bank but don't go and borrow money to consume you know borrow money to hold a party borrow money to have a wedding no that's what keeps people poor it keeps people poor you know and then another thing is like you're buying apps a lot of people are buying apps I'll tell you what, I have a bunch of apps that I use and what I do is this is that I do the free trial and then I have a reminder on my phone so before the free trial is over I just do whatever I want to do with the app and then I cancel and so I've got the benefit of that app and I'm not paying a dime. Why should I pay a dime if I don't have to? If I have to then I'll pay but if it's offered to me free of charge I have wisdom. I'm going to use my wisdom to try to avoid paying money. So there's nothing like stinginess or greediness. That is, is I mean, that, that, you're being intelligent, you're being wise. So don't start buying apps. You want to do this, boom. You want to do this, boom. No, 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 no. And then another thing is womanizing. Now, that is clear enough. I'm not going to elaborate on that. But womanizing costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of money, you know. Then you now have keeping up with your neighbors. Your neighbors have bought a car. You too, you want to buy a car. Your neighbors have bought this. You too, you want to buy this. Now, if you're doing that, if you say, okay, this is my neighbor here. My neighbor has this. You look at your neighbor. What does he have? You go and buy it. You look at your neighbor. And though that stupid, silly, idiotic show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians, I've never watched one episode, but it fuels this kind of behavior because it teaches people to want to, to keep up. Oh, what's, what's in vogue now? Whether or not you can afford it, you go and buy. No, buy things that you need, not things that people are buying. You know, so you can keep up with your neighbors, keep up with the Joneses. You don't want to do that. It makes you expend your money in a foolish way. So you don't want to do that. Now, also, one of the things that, one of the things that people do, you know, and I'm coming to the end very soon, is that, you know, you use your internet data. You spend a lot of money on internet, you know, on data. But you're using it to gossip. You're using it to browse the net. You're using it for worthless things. Then why do you have data? It's just then you become addicted to the internet and then you, you're not productive. No, use your data to sell. Use your data to sell. Use your data to sell. And then last but not the least, last but not the least, don't lend to friends. Don't lend to friends. You know, don't lend to friends. Give friends money that you can afford to lose. Because when you lend to friends, chance, chances are that you're going to lose the friend, you're going to lose the money. And then it's going to be something that really upsets you for a long time and affects other things in your life you know now having said that having said that um i know that there is right now an issue with a lady in uh, nigeria who got married and then she um proved that she was a virgin by showing the white cloth that um on the bed sheet that she and her husband you know had consummated their marriage on their wedding day and a lot of people are condemning this woman condemning this woman look there is nothing wrong with it i look if you read the book of deuteronomy you know you read the book of deuteronomy it's there you know uh, uh, several verses you know several verses in deuteronomy where it's, these things are actually promoted in scripture and in, also in African culture all over Africa from um, uh, Cairo all the way to South Africa you know before uh, the white folk came before uh, colonialism came when you got married you know you proved your virginity by showing the white um, uh, stained sheets there's nothing wrong with it but even if you're outraged now ask yourself this question when all these on air on air personality all these uh, female on air personality that bleach themselves left right and center surgically enhance themselves you know and then when they start to show their overused and overworked body parts i mean it's from the kind of things that they do 
when they can't start to show them do you complain <laughs> you go there you look and then this girl is coming to show decency that look she's promoting uh, um, uh, keeping your virginity until marriage and you have the guts to make fun of her that girl i salute you my name is rena mokri and i salute you thank you for watching and god bless you